Welcome to day 326 of our DSO journey. I'm Ed Krasenstein here with my twin brother, Brian. And remember, these videos are being sponsored by NFT Tech. They are an investor in CloudFeed. There's actually a whole lot of news today, Brian. Yeah, I'm kind of glad we don't have a guest on today because we probably this episode would probably last 50 minutes. Yeah, so as you start things off, Pearl, they, they divulged some of what they're working on. Some They kind of provided some more information on what you can expect from their upcoming app. Of course, Pearl used to be known as Jam. They rebranded a few weeks ago to Pearl. And people found pictures, apparently, from Pearl on DSO and DSO blockchain. So they started wondering, like, what's going on? I, haven't, I don't know what pictures they're referring to. I, don't, I haven't seen them. But uh, Pearl made a post today, or I guess it was last night, saying that they assume everybody's wondering what they're building. Uh, they said that they want to take DSO further. For example, the ability to support creators through creator coins. They want to build an app that all of their friends and favorite creators would use. And they, they said it's going to be a mobile app. It's going to enable fans and creators to grow and earn together. All the content on Pearl is going to be photos and videos. So it's not going to be text. It's just going to be photos and videos. So more like of an Instagram type thing, I, you can assume, Instagram or TikTok, where it's just photos and videos. So no text. It's not going to be like Diamond app in any way, shape, or form. Fans and creators are going to be a share content, send tips, and buy and sell creator coins. But the unique thing here is that the creator coins can be bought with US dollars instead of with DSO. The, and it's gonna be done without exchanges. So I assume smart contract or something along the lines of a smart contract will be used to do the conversions. Smart and service. I guess you'd rather say smart service, service yeah, right? Smart service. Uh, and they're looking to create reoccurring value for coin holders and they're looking to build a better social media experience. So, I mean, I think we can kind of like extrapolate what they said and kind of come to a, draw a picture in our heads, right? So it's gonna be a video and photo sharing service for influencers, for creators, and for fans. And the fans are gonna be able to invest in creator coins, but that part of that creator coin is gonna be able to be paid back kind of like what we see with NFTs where you can invest in a creator and you earn when, the, when that creator's NFTs sell. I think this is going to be similar in that you're going to earn based on what that creator's doing, what that influencer is doing on Pearl. Yeah, and whether they're going to do this with subscriptions or another means, uh, we don't know. Uh, but I, I just got to say, like, like Pearl is what has me excited. Pearl and all these other story uh, Overclout, which I'm about to talk about, these are all apps that are straying from the usual. So they're, don't get me wrong, Diamond App is amazing. I love Diamond App. I use it every day. But I think that if DSO is going to excel, we need to see nodes that look different. And so far, other than maybe five or six, most nodes are basically this working the same way as Diamond App is. So I, th I think what Pearl's doing is great. I think it has a lot of potential. I know they got a lot of investment early on. So I, I think they could be the killer app. They could be the app that really drives traffic. Maybe not. It doesn't they have could... to be one killer app. It could be several. Exactly. And, and, and I, I think I want to get on to Overclout now. Overclout, which I think is prepared to launch at the end of this month, so another couple of weeks, uh, they, they have allowed a few beta testers to kind of step in and check it out. I got to get a, get a sneak peek at what they're working on. Uh, and I got to tell you, I, I think this is another one that's, that's taking things and, and making it a little bit different so that it's not like another Diamond app. And although Overcloud, it's going to have the same basic functionality as Diamond app, I think the way that they're presenting stuff is going to appeal to different people. And, and, I, and I, I, some of the things that I've noticed that they're doing is that Instead of like right now, you can get six, give six diamonds up to six diamonds on Diamond Diamond app and on BitCloud. Uh, they've allowed for all eight diamond levels to be tapped into, but instead of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight diamonds, each each category is actually a different colored gem. So a blue gem might be one diamond, whereas a purple gem could be eight diamonds, which is like twenty two thousand dollars or something like that. So it's a cool way of 
of looking at it. And instead of saying, saying how many diamonds, it says the dollar value. So it's folk, it has more focus on USD. So it should appeal to people who aren't really crypto native because it'd be like, oh, I can give this person 50 cents. I can give this person $5. Instead of, oh, six diamonds, what is six diamonds? Uh, something else I noticed is that under each post made, it actually says the reward. So it says how much money that post has made. Oh, cool. So if we I post like this video and we get, say, like two, four diamonds, three, three diamonds, and 31 diamonds, instead of just listing that, it will actually say whatever the value is, maybe $12, $12.34 or something like that. So everybody has access to seeing how much everybody else is making for each post. So that, so you can come on to, come on to overclout and say, Oh, wow, that post just made $45. That's crazy. I'm going to start posting more. So I think it's going to, I think it's going to put a monetary value more on, on actions rather than this DSO value or diamond value. And it, it might help appeal to more people who aren't, I guess, literate in all these DSO terminologies. And, and finally, they're, they're, they have another trending, trending section on the side of their site, and they're going to highlight newbies, noobs, they call them. So you're going to see the, all the new users that signed up. You're going to be able to see users that got the most followers in the last day. It, they're just taking a different approach, and I really love that. Yeah, Overclout looks awesome. And like, you know, like Pearl's taking it in a completely different direction from Diamond App. Overclout is taking some of the idea of, ideas of a social feed, a Twitter-like diamond app-like feed, but adding features and changing things around. I love the, the, what they're doing with diamonds. I love how you're going to be able to see how much each post makes, because I think people are going to be curious about that. And that might help onboard people if you're going to see some of these top posts that might be making, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40, maybe even $400. You're going to see that and be like, oh, wow, I can do this. So I, I love that. I love what they're doing. I can't wait to see Overclout when it comes out. Uh, I did. You got a sneak peek, or not? Yeah, I did. I did. That's awesome. So also tomorrow is the NFTs to space space mission, and there are currently four, 54 different people sending NFTs to space, and 154. NFTs are going into space. 130 or so of these are DSO NFTs. So that's really cool. This is going to take place at 2 to 4 p.m. Eastern time on Wednesday. And it's going to be in a super Zoom. I don't know who's going to be invited. I know there's a room for only a certain amount of people to watch this. But what's really, in, really cool, of course, Chase Steely is behind this project. Matryoshka has been helping him out and a lot of other community members as well. Uh, Scion Proctor. She is an astronaut. She is actually sending some of her Ethereum NFTs to space in this mission as well. She is leading the mission. She's the one leading this NFTs to space mission where all these DSO NFTs are going to space. She's going to be on the Zoom call. She's going to be signing all certificates of authenticity saying that each of these NFTs actually went into space. And Cyan Proctor, she's, she's an amazing woman. She's the first African-American woman to have piloted a spacecraft. She went to space last year, I believe. I think it was last September. So this is going to be awesome. We have a, a real astronaut leading this mission to send DSO NFTs to space. It's awesome. I, I agree. And Chase Steely has done an amazing job. Matreska has as well. Uh, Michelle Lord, all these people involved in this project are, are, have really taken things up a notch. And, and I think that there's the potential to have a lot of media involved and a lot of media covering some of this stuff. We've already seen it a, a little bit, but I, I think that things like this is what's going to put DSO on the map. And no, they're not all DSO NFTs. There's Ethereum NFTs, uh, maybe some Solana NFTs, I'm not sure. But the fact that DSO is a big part of this and we have an astronaut, a rather famous astronaut involved in this, signing the certificates saying that these things actually have been sent to space. I think that's huge. And, and I, I, I love that the community is doing this. It's not the core team doing this, but it's a community and the community is taking the initiative themselves. And I love it. I, I think the people involved here are such hard workers and doing an incredible job. Yeah, and uh, Jody 
Bossert, he's been involved heavily. Um, who else? Nathan Wells, he's been involved heavily. It's been a lot of community members really involved in this. And it's come together. And this is just a first. We're going to see others in the near future as well. So they hope to do it bi-weekly, maybe, maybe monthly, once things get going. So it's, it's an awesome, awesome initiative. I know Chase really wanted to bring the space and NFT world together. And DSO is being used for most of this. This mission, like I said, is mostly DSO NFTs. Yeah, so exciting. So Open Prosper yesterday introduced hashtag tracking, Brian. Yeah, so, so they, they've introduced something they call trending hashtags. It's a beta, beta I, I guess, feature right now. It's just an experimental feature, so they'll said. But uh, it's pretty cool. You can see in the last 24 hours, which hashtags have been used the most. It gives a number of how many times. Uh, to the right, it actually gives some icons of some of the users that are using the hashtag. Uh, really slick, really sleek, uh, really informative. And, and uh, Salil actually went out and he made some recommendations on how we could actually use these hashtags. And for one, he said that we should post the Krasenstein daily hashtag on all of our videos, which Ed, I guess we're going to do that now, right? Remind me to do that before I post it and then we can start doing that. Yeah. So the Krasenstein daily, if you ever want to find a Krasenstein video from here on out, all you have to do is search for the Krasenstein daily hashtag. And our video should pop up because we're going to use them if Ed remembers. Um, he, he also recommended like other users, like, like as you know, Darian Parrish is doing the daily dip. So he could hashtag daily dip uh, on all of his videos. And Sandy Rose, who always speaks in really long, eloquent uh, <laughs> paragraphs, uh, maybe books, I could say, uh, she could use Sandy, hashtag Sandy Speaks, or High Key could use hashtag High Key World. So I, I think that there's a lot of use cases here to help with search and help with discovery. Um, he also recommended that Dharmesh, when people share the his wordplay app uh, on Diso, that it the share the share feature automatically adds the hashtag Wordle uh, hashtag, so then people can see oh who's who's scoring on wordplay and what are their scores. I can just click on this Wordle hashtag and see them all. So great ideas. I know some other people brought up some ideas. You want to touch on some of those? Yeah, Mub, Mubs made a suggestion. Uh, he said we should have we should have scheduled hashtag events like Tuesday intro for new new users or OGs to introduce themselves to the community. Follow Friday where you make a post recommending three people the community should follow and why. Um, then Cloud Women Unite suggested using the hashtag Diso Women for Diso Women. I'm I'm sure. A lot of the women on DSO could come up with some really cool ideas for that hashtag. Uh, D Jesus suggested hashtag two core team for messages being sent to the core team. I really like that one. Uh, Tuno Arrows suggested TBT for Throwback Thursdays. I like Throwback Thursdays. You see like old pictures, old things that took place. Maybe we could see um, Natter as a child in a, in a TBT post. Oh, yeah, I, I love that idea. I love that idea of using hashtags. Should be interesting to see if it catches on because I know it, it's been tried before in other nodes and never really caught on. But I think using Open Prosper, I think that's going to kind of spur things forward. And maybe we can see, you know, maybe Diamond App and maybe Op and maybe um, some of these other apps can begin showing the top hashtags from Open Prosper on their nodes. I think that would be a really cool idea. Absolutely. And, and I totally agree. So Agora Labs, uh, formerly Bitperks, they have announced that they received some backing. Yeah, from the Z Fellows uh, Accelerate, Accelerator Program. Uh, this is a program that has been backing crypto projects. Um, I know they give like $10,000 in, in funding to projects. So I'm not sure if the, I, I'm guessing that that's what they got. They got the $10,000 funding from Z Fellows. Uh, another perk is that the companies that get funded by Z Fellows are mentioned by Naval, uh, by Mark Randolph, who's a, a founder, one of the co-founders of Netflix. Um, also Sean Rad, who's a founder of Tinder and many other uh, entrepreneurs and and really high up people within the crypto and the tech space. So congrats, Charles One. I know you've been working your butt off on this. 
Uh, we had Charles on our show a couple of times. He's doing great stuff. Agora Labs is awesome. I think we just need more users on DSO and, and Agora Labs is really going to be a powerhouse in the future. So congrats again. I, I really, I really love what they're doing and the funding should take them, take them to the next level. Yeah, most definitely. I can't wait to see what they have. Uh, also yesterday, DSO's no codes, DSO no codes, Tony Lewis showed off their latest no code creation. And it's their ability to in within their apps to allow people to gift digital goods like NFTs. And basically all you have to do is select the NFT you want, add it to your cart, enter the name of the recipient as long, along with the email of the recipient, and then check the send as gift box. And then you can order it. You can pay with DSO or credit card, which is really cool. So they're doing something smart service perhaps uh, to do that exchange. So people who do not know about DSO too much or don't own any DSO can use a credit card to purchase an NFT as a gift and send it off as an email. Uh, there's a video on uh, DSO No Code's DSO account showing off this feature. So definitely check that out if you haven't already, but they keep putting out more and more features that they're adding. So I'm looking forward to seeing some apps built on DSO No Code. Yeah, and I think this is a trend that we're seeing. I mean, just today we've talked about Pearl, Overclout, now Decent No Code. They're all using USD to kind of appeal to people that are outside the crypto space and the ability to buy NFTs with, with USD or transfer, give them as gifts. Uh, like we said with Pearl, they're, uh, they're allowing people to, to basically buy creator coins with USD and, and Overclout is denominating everything in USD. So I, I think that's important. It's an important step to appeal to a wider audience. And, and I think that there's reason we're seeing a lot of these apps and a lot of these projects turn towards that direction. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so finally, that was a lot of news. Uh, community events today at 10 a.m. Eastern time, shortly after this video is posted on Chime In. There's Crypto Talks with Darian Parrish. It's a weekly event he's been holding. Uh, at 12 p.m. Eastern time on Clubhouse is Diso Gallery for Female Artists 3D with Clout Women Unite, Miss Katie Ann, Michelle Lord, Spunk Art, French Connector, GDS, Jay Vague, and Matreshka. Uh, definitely check that out again at 12 p.m. Eastern time. So I, I think that's all we have for today. I know it was a lot of news. It's good to see that because yesterday we didn't really have too much news. And we'll talk to everyone tomorrow.